welcome to the Prophet's Diary. I am Shanique Beckford and in this series I will be sharing with you on the Prophet's Diary my experience from the call of the prophetic into being a pastor of two churches and other things in the making. This series is going to be one that is very transparent, one that is very true, very pure, unedited, unadulterated truth about the call of the prophetic there are many people that will not be honest or open enough to share their experiences with you there are many persons who are going through many things in their prophetic uh, training or preparation and they do not understand or know if this is of God or what are some of the things that she can actually experience or go through so in this episode in this series and episode one I'm gonna be sharing with you about the call and the humility Please stay tuned for more. Hello everyone, welcome to Prophet's Diary. I'm Shanique Beckford and in today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you on the call to the prophetic. The prophetic is one where the Holy Spirit, the prophetic office is one where the Holy Spirit calls you into office to speak the divine word of God. The Bible does say that before God does anything in the earth realm, he will first reveal it to his servants, the prophets. If God is going to use you to minister his word to a nation or to anyone at all, he's going to first have to call you anoint you train or prepare you for the task or the assignment that he is going to place on your life now my story started in 2013 I was a student of Jamaica Theological Seminary where I was uh, studying theology I was majoring in theology and minoring in guidance and counseling my entire world was wrapped up in I'm going to be a pastor I'm going to lead the people of God I have a heart for the people I want to do what other pastors did not do I'm going to remain humble I'm going to serve God I'm going to serve the people to the best of my ability that was where I was at in that moment of time now I remember that a very good friend of mine and a student uh, colleague had invited me to a church in half tree at the time which was celebration and of course I went I was not a part of any church I did not know anything about the prophetic or any anything at that at all now I remember after going to celebration I got hooked and if you know anything about celebration church and the host pastor you will know exactly what I mean so I started going to that church and upon going it got to a point where the prophet had called me out and said that he had a word for me and at that moment I was pretty stunned I was pretty bummed out uh, why is it that the prophet wants to speak to me in office as when he called me out of the congregation he said he had a word for me but he would talk to me in office I was pretty much trying to figure out what did I do wrong did I do something is he going to rebuke me and it's so bad that he cannot say it out um, vocally or, or uh, publicly but when I got to the office the man of God prophet Carter salutes to you sir you are the truest that you are the goat in this thing and he began to uh, prophesy and share with me he said that somehow the Holy Spirit uh, made him aware that I was studying uh, theology at that time and he said that that was not actually what God was calling me to do within that time and he said that God was calling me to be a prophetess to the nation he went ahead he laid hands on me and he prayed for me and all of the call all the stuff that happens when you're called by God that's what he went ahead and he did now in that moment of time I left him I felt psyched, I was pumped, I felt yes, I'm called to be a prophet to the nation. Things are going to just get better from here on. Little did I know that I was just going to go through so much. I had no idea. No, I remember at that point in time where, as I said, I was studying theology. It was exam time. I was getting ready to do exams. And I remember I had paid a large amount of money towards my school tuition. And the school actually called me and they said to me that you won't be able to do your exams because you did not pay all of your school fee. And I was a bit taken aback because I thought that I had so many other classmates 
classmates that did not pay the amount that I had paid but they were able to do their exams and I was just completely taken back at the time I did not have anyone to call of course my mother could not afford it at the time had no one else that I could actually call to say can you help me to pay my tuition I need to do my exams right now and I was just completely completely discouraged I was becoming depressed so I fell out of college so that's one of the first things that happened I thought that being called to the prophetic things would just begin to work for me because now there's a special grace that was on my life I had no idea that I would have to go through a series of events no so i fell out of college and then the next thing that happened i was staying with this lady i could not afford to rent on to stay on dharma i could not afford to rent a whole house and so i was staying with this lady where she allowed me to stay and pay a certain amount of money per month it got to a point where i was going to celebration on church more often i was praying more often and then all of a sudden this lady started to tell me that i can no longer stay at her home of course i did nothing wrong but the more I was going to celebrate on church, the more the atmosphere began to just rub off on me. The atmosphere of worship, the atmosphere with the powerful word of God that the man of God used to share. It used to provoke me. It used to push me catapult me into an atmosphere where even when I left church I would just go home and I would pray if anyone is watching this and you know my story you would know that I had this red sheet if you guys know when you're going off to college your mother or your grandmother will give you a nice sheet some pillows some pots and pans and utensils and so I had a red sheet that my mother gave me and I used to just spread it out on the ground and I used to just lay down and pray on that sheet eat them. I used to pray sometimes I would pray all night I used to fast on it so sometimes all night I'm praying I used to fast and pray I fasted and prayed so much on that red sheet and the reason why I chose that red sheet because I believe that red just represented the blood of Jesus Christ and I know some persons may be saying oh you are just spooky and you're crazy you don't have to lay on a red sheet for it to represent the blood of Jesus I was I was miles away from home had no one that was there with me the only thing I had was just that red sheet that was my altar so I used my red sheet to become a prior altar and I would lay there and pray for hours there were days I did not eat because I was fasting to the point where I started to have gas pains that would move from my stomach to my side to my back I would go through those gas pains because I was fasting I just needed to get closer to God if you are being caught into the prophetic you are just told that you're caught to the prophetic maybe your pastor told you or maybe the Holy Spirit came to you by a dream or he told you that hey I'm calling you to be a prophet to the nations you must ensure that you are a part of an atmosphere that can help to provoke intercession out of you be a part of an atmosphere that will provoke you to want more of God when you're being called to God you must build your you're called to the prophetic on a strong foundation of prayer and also fasting and worship your foundation of the prophetic must be built on prayer fasting and just spending quality time in the presence of God and that was what I used to do on that red sheet now at that time I was not working I fell out of college the lady started to say that I was living with started to say I can no longer stay at her house and it did not get bad I continued to just pray now of course my mom lives in the country I have a whole house in the country I had family also in Kingston but when you have family and you're not close to them or they don't have any space for you to stay at their place it can become something that just does not work in your favor and I did not want to return to the country because I did not want anyone to say oh Monica's daughter fell out of college did you hear she couldn't afford her school fee what a disgrace for you to go into the city to study and come back not accomplishing anything that was not going to be a part of my story I wanted to go to Kingston to go to the city to study to be successful when I returned home I was going to return with a degree I was going to return with something that I have achieved because I had worked hard so I decided if I was going to struggle I was going to struggle but I was not going to go back empty-handed 
no i remember one day where the holy spirit um i was praying and the holy spirit began to speak to me and so i decided it was a holiday and i decided i was just gonna go to the park just sit relax just meditate on the word of god and then go back home while i was there praying i saw in the realm of the spirit i saw a lock i don't know if you guys know a lock where you would put like on a grill outside or on your doors or anything to protect it from someone coming in i saw one of those lock in the realm of the spirit i immediately just decided to hey go home when i got home i saw i tried to open the grill to go in unfortunately the key that i had was not opening the lock then i realized that the locks were changed so i started to call the lady that was there around her side of the house and when she came out she barged out and she began to shout at me she just began to bellow you can't stay here you've got to leave you've got to go you can't stay in my house anymore I was completely bummed out I had no idea why this was going on there were people that were next door as I said it was a holiday there were many people that were next door on the outside looking at the embarrassment and the humiliation that I was facing now what had happened was the house i was stayed at the lady had lost her son um a few years ago and she did not take it very lightly and i'm not going to be insensitive about this issue i've never lost anyone before i've never had anyone for me that has passed so i don't i can't i don't know what it feels like really i can just try to uh, sympathize but i don't know what it feels like so i'm not going to pretend as though maybe she was not hurting so apparently she would come and she would, you know, go into her room or whatever she was doing and she would talk to that familiar spirit that she thought was her son. And she would just love on him, kiss on him. I don't know how, but she would always say that she was doing that. And the prize that I was praying was obviously irritating something that was going on in the atmosphere you may not see results when you pray as i said but that does not mean that something is not happening in the realm of the spirit when you pray you may not see results happen immediately but something is definitely happening in the realm of the spirit that you have not seen as yet no i grabbed a few stuff and i just left very quickly at that moment i decided i was going to call the guy that i was dating and when i called him and i was asking can i stay at your place real quick Quickly, just for a day or two let me just get my life back on track this guy said that the Holy Spirit told him that we have to break up because the Holy Spirit was doing something in my life that he could not be a part of at that time to me that did not make sense I needed you the most in that moment of time and that's when you were actually going to break up with me um, I used to think okay we can break up that's fine but at least allow me to stay in your couch for a day or two that was not the case i want to say something to you right now when god calls you to the prophetic ministry or into prophetic office you may begin to lose some people you may begin to lose some things it's just a part of the process if you remember when god called elisha Elijah went to Elisha and Elisha had to go tell his mother and his father that he had to leave. When God is calling you into the prophetic, you may have to leave some people behind. You may have to leave some things behind because where God is taking you, not everyone can go and not everyone is actually going to understand what it is that you are doing or the, understand the reason why you're doing the things that you can do. It's not necessarily that you're going through a warfare, but it is what you call a process. It is what you call preparation when God is calling you to be a prophet to the nation one of the first things that happen is he will call you and then he will prepare you after he prepares you he will train you you will begin to emerge or go through a developing stage after which he will release you to the nations but when you're going through your process of preparation it is not going to necessarily be one of the easiest and each person each individual will go through their own individual experience this is my experience for you you may be going through something that you may be going through something that is completely different from what I went through but I want to encourage you that it doesn't matter what you're going through it's not the end it is only the beginning things are actually going to get better so later in this series I'm going to be sharing with you guys on how 
I became homeless. So episode two will tell you guys what I did when I was homeless. How did I manage being on the road with half wearing the same dirty clothes? Is how did I come going through that? I'm gonna take to the point where I almost got raped. I was going from house to house to the point where I got married. I started a church. I have two churches. I'm married. Life is just somehow going okay. And then Jezebel came in and destroyed my church. I'm gonna share so much with you guys this is something that people do not share on a regular basis what is it that prophets go through we tend to our most persons tend to come on social media and they post lovely photos they share how many people are in their church I don't know if it's for the hype or comparison competition whatever it is but what I want to share with you is my true experience so if you are going through the same thing then you can somehow relate to what I'm saying you can somehow come to understand that if I did not die if me never did then you are not going to die God is with you his word says I will never leave you nor forsake you but if you can lose everything from me then you can also gain everything from me no it was at that point where I felt like I was losing my mind so I just got the call I was just told that I'm caught to the prophetic and then everything just started to go downhill what could possibly go worse in my life just because I'm called to the prophetic there are some people who they do not necessarily desire the prophetic they knew nothing about it but then the Holy Spirit comes and he calls you he tells you in a dream or a vision by night that he has called you to be a prophet maybe a pastor or another prophet called you out and he said that God's going to use you as a prophetic voice then with that you can understand that there are some things that may happen that God will allow to happen to process you but there are some people that they chase after the prophet they want to be a prophet they call themselves prophet and they jump into something that God did not call them into can you imagine if I decided I wanted to be a prophet I'm going to pose as a prophet I'm gonna be uh, put what when you pull a card from a card pack I'm gonna be a pose a prophet can you imagine if I decided that I wanted to be a prophet but I was not grace for it how would I manage to maintain operating in what I felt was the prophetic without the grace of the prophet Every level that God calls you to, there are certain devils that are assigned to that level. Every office that you operate in, there's a certain demonic spirit that is assigned to fight against that office. When prophets are attacked by Jezebels, they are also graced to go through it. When evangelistic ministries that go wide and far are attacked by the newspaper, the gleaners, they are graced to go through that. When pastors are attacked that they love, love money or they're raping the, the girls and some of these things are true but some of these things are also lying they're also grace to go through it and you may feel like you're losing everything everyone around you you may feel like people do not understand you because guess what when you begin to tell people that you're seeing angels you're hearing the Holy Spirit talk to you the Holy Spirit is showing and revealing certain things to you there are some people that will say you do not know what you're talking about there are some people that will say you're losing your mind something is terribly wrong with you people may not understand what you're going through and so you may feel like you're you're left all alone no one understands especially if you begin to speak out and what God is revealing to you there are some people that will say that you are rebellious or you feel as though you have grown or you know God and people will have the utmost to say but you have to know God for yourself and one more thing I want to share with you is please ensure that you are a part of a church where there is an atmosphere that is a Producive, it, there's an atmosphere that is productive, conducive, that can actually help you to spend more time in the presence of God. It is very imperative that you're a part of an atmosphere that can help you to stay and come closer to God. Your home church may not be prophetic, your pastor may not be a prophetic minister or a prophet. I'm not saying to you that you should leave that church. No, I'm, I won't dare say that to you. But I will say find a mentor or pray for a mentor 
or someone that you can visit their ministry occasionally or you can sit under their grace occasionally that can impart you that can teach you the word of god that can help you to be more sensitive to the voice or the spirit of god because this is going to help you had it not been for celebration church i would have lost my mind had it not been for hearing the sound word of god being a part of a rich atmosphere a culture of worship and prayer i would have probably lost my mind because every Everything just started to go from right to left, from left to right, all the way down the hill. I had no money, had nothing to eat, had nowhere to stay. I was now homeless on the streets trying to figure out where I was going to sleep. I made up in my mind I was going to sleep on the roadside under the bus park that night. I don't know what was going to happen, but little did I know at that time that God was preparing me for something that was greater. Little did I know that God was was with me in those very moments that I felt like I was alone. I was alone. I was helpless. I was hopeless. I was homeless. I was in total shock. I was bummed out. I didn't know what I was going to do. There was no one that I could possibly call. But sometimes God gets you to this place where you have to become completely dependent on the Holy Spirit. Everything that I had gone through and everything that you're going through when you're called to the prophetic, the extreme humiliation you're going through, it is humiliation for humility. Can I say that one more time or can I get this to go up on the screen? It is humiliation for humility. God is going to allow you to go through some things that will cause you to remain humble. As you, as he begins to pour his grace upon you, the prophetic, the grace of the prophetic is a powerful one. You walk with so much authority and dominion. There's so much grace and the presence of God that is upon your life. If you are not careful, this thing can cause you to lose yourself. And so God will allow some things that happen to get you to a place where you are completely broken where it is not about you it is never about you but it is about the holy spirit and so you are broken for purpose you are rejected to carry something that is greater you are humiliated for humility because when god truly begins to elevate you and carry you to a higher place you will be more than glad for the experience that you have gone through so wherever you are in your prophetic call maybe you're just in the beginning stages you don't understand what is happening it is just to process you just to humble you just to bring you to a place where there's no one else but god it is often said that a prophet's journey is a lonely one it is often said that a prophet's middle name is a is disappointment so in the next episode of prophet's diary i'm going to be sharing with you on how did i cope while i was homeless did someone actually take me in what did i do was it was it that god was punishing me why he allowed me to be put out on the streets not having anywhere to go or was it a part of the process throughout that entire time every time something bad happened i was hearing god just the same it was never that i sinned it was never that i did anything but it was a part of the process and preparation so if you want to find out what happened when i became homeless was i raped what on earth happened to shani Bedford? i want you to stay tuned for more teaching and for more on my story on the prophet's diary thank you so much for watching and if you found this interesting or it helped you any at all i want you to go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section share with me how what was it that you liked most about this episode was it relatable to what your you are experiencing like the video share with a friend and thank you so much for watching god bless you until next episode i'll see you bye